Hey, my name's Jared. I have this uh, Duet USB audio interface by Apogee, by Apogee, Duet interface by Apogee. I bought it not working, it doesn't power on. Apparently the screen was replaced on it. For whatever reason, it just doesn't power up now. So I'm kind of hoping it's something really simple. And for the heck of it, we'll just plug it into my, this is plugged into my MacBook Pro currently. And when we plug it in, there's nothing that happens. Let's see if it's gonna recognize. Oh, it shows, it shows the Duet USB 2 in here. So it might just be that the, the OLED screen is not working for some reason. I wonder if I can get sound out of this. Okay, so it's working. This is functional, but there's something going on with the display. So we're gonna go ahead and open it up and try to figure out what the heck is going on. Okay, so I probably should like go look up instructions. There's a screw right there. Well, there's our screws. Maybe I should like get something to like cushion it. That's, that's not helpful. There, there we go. This one won't screw these in much too tight. Okay, so we got all the got all the screws out. Um, let's see. Maybe I do have to take this knob off. I'm guessing that's gonna be. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. Uh, yeah, this is really interesting. There's lots of little. I don't know if these are like processors. Here's an ESS. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna try to get the front off front of this off. <sighs> got the my toolbox. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this. I don't really have the right tools for this, but I'm gonna just try to take this nut and washer off. Yeah, it looks like it's freeing the board now. Okay. Okay. So there's a couple different parts here. I'm gonna release this flex cable. So I don't screw it up further. The OLED displays up here, and then there's this flex ribbon cable that sits in there, and then there's this screen right here, and there's some inner in-between board. So, I mean, I guess the first thing I can do is just, I can try reseating this. I don't know if this is like a ribbon cable or a flex cable from the actual, o it's an OLED display. It's not a, just an LCD. Okay, so that's out. Unless this is maybe shorting out on something. <laughs> Whoa, okay. So this is not installed correctly. This, these are, these are the button pads that are actually supposed to line up with these two right here. And this was just sitting in there. So this needs, this, this whole frame right here needs to come out. So let's lift out, let's lift out this plate. Okay, so there's that. Put that aside. Okay, well, there's there's the OLED display. Why was that just like, just like I guess that sits there. So that, that, that just sits in there, just like that. So that's how it's supposed to be. Okay, so let's go ahead and try to connect this up. We got the, the, we got the OLED connected to this riser card, I guess. So I'm trying to connect the contact sides with what looks like the contacts are on this side of that connector right there. So I'm gonna try, I feel like that's seated all the way. Now if I just leave it like that, it looks like no part of it's gonna short out on anything. So I can just plug it in, see if we have life. Okay. I suspect we have a short. I'm gonna use this this multimeter to ohm out. I mean, for all I know, it could it could not be the cable. So 
I thought those out of any of those pins, it looked like those two would be shorting out on each other, but they're not. So basically checking every pin next to each other to make sure that nothing's touching or somehow shorted on it because that would obviously cause this board to lose connection and protect itself from getting fried. So the next thing I want to try is there's enough space that when I plug this in, there's enough contacts exposed that I could probably cut it a little bit shorter, have these flush cutters. Basically, I'm just going to try to make a parallel cut to the ribbon so it's going to lay in there flat. Nothing. Okay. That's really hot. That's not good. Something's up with that. Someone's getting really hot. Shorting or fried or something. So I just spent a good hour trying to problem solve and try to figure out why the display isn't working and try to narrow down and try to troubleshoot. So I know this board is working. I was able to get the capacitive touch buttons to show up in the Apogee preferences. The rotary encoder works. It goes through all the functions uh, and activates all of the functions in the control application. So I know that works. I was still getting some weird shorting that's going on. So I think that there's something maybe wrong with this module, um, this display module, but I, I do know that the previous owner has replaced this. So either this was accidentally fried when they were installing it, or there's something wrong with the control module for this display on this board somewhere. I just don't know where that is because there's, it's not on here. This is, I looked up this part right here. This is, this is just for the capacitive touch sensors. So, and there's no other circuitry on this board besides that I see right there. So, so we've got two LEDs. That's a good sign. If I launch it, launch the Apogee uh, Maestro controlling app, you'll see under device, I don't know, output here. If I press this button, it still activates uh, the all channel mute. And then this other button right here would reset the level meters. I basically can control, where is that device settings? Yeah, you can assign what these buttons do here. There's a lot of little pins on here. I don't really want to mess with this. Okay, so it looks like this is ground. I'm just gonna make sure that it is. Okay, well, all four of those corners right there on that connector are showing that they're all connected. So I'm going to just make a guess that that's ground. So here's the pinout. So I don't know if you can see that, but there's pin one and there's pin 35. So that's pin one right there and that's pin 35 on that side. And according to the pin definition, pin 31, it should be showing our power supply for operation. Um, and I can even check these ground connections to uh, 30 and uh, 234, this looks like this is the analog circuit ground. Down here you can see what the voltage should be reading. So supply voltage should be between this voltage and this voltage. Same to check the IO pins and then display voltage. I'm only going to probably be able to see the supply voltage should be a constant some, somewhere in that range and I'll check this uh, supply voltage for the display as well. Okay, so I gotta go to ground. Looks like there's a 35, 34, 33, 32, 31. Oh, okay, we got 3.2 volts it looks like. negative five volts. Yeah, it looks like the voltages are within the range that are spec on the data sheet. So I feel like I have two options right now. I feel like A, I could order this panel 
and replace it, but there's no guarantee at this point that that's actually gonna fix the problem. There's a good chance that it could, but knowing that this panel has just been replaced recently and it's not working still, leads me to believe that there's maybe something else wrong with this board. And I don't have a second do what to test this with. I also checked the connections from this header here and matched them up with all of the connections on the board header. Everything ohms out, so, and there's nothing shorting, so that doesn't make me think that it's this ribbon either. So being that it looks like all of the functionality that would be otherwise on the screen, which is more or less just some fancy view meters, everything looks like is gonna be mirrored inside of this Apogee application. Now it's a little, um, it's a little more inconvenient to have to go to this program every time I wanna adjust the setting. So I just show you here. Every time I click through this button, it's gonna show all of the functions that otherwise would have been on that OLED screen. So I think for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and button this thing back up without the OLED screen installed. One of the benefits that I could see about not having the OLED screen installed is from what I've read, to use phantom power on this thing, you need to have not only bus power, but also five volts running to this jack right here. Now, if we are eliminating the OLED screen, we're reducing some of the power consumption that the Duet takes normally. So I don't know if it would have issues running phantom power over the USB bus in addition to powering the OLED screen, but maybe this is an advantage. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it back together. So in order to use the Duet, you do not need this screen. That's Kind of the main premise of this is why I just took it out altogether because you can control pretty much any of the functions that you would otherwise be able to tell with the screen in the software. But I will also link to a website that shows how to take this apart as well and also links to the part number for this screen. Um, so I'll also provide a link for that down in the description. If you found this video helpful at all, you can really help me out by leaving in a comment down below or giving this video a thumbs up. My plan is to release more stuff like this. I also have other tutorials on my page. If you go ahead and subscribe to my channel and press the little bell icon, it will notify you when I release other DIY tutorials and uh, teardowns and all sorts of things related to gear. So, well, uh, thanks for watching and have a great day. I still don't know how to end videos yet. Oh well. It's like 2.30 in the morning right now. I'm just, I'm just trying to finish this, so. Yep.